Hello, traders. It's E from MarketWizard.com. Just before noon on Saturday, the 12th of November, 2022. Reminding traders to use risk capital you can afford to lose. And a reminder, this is a journal for myself where I review the week's activity and things that I perhaps got right, things that I got wrong, things that I was able to uh, learn from um, because the market is a great teacher. And the more we listen to uh, the subtle nuances, the easier it is for us to make a living out of this business. So take a look at a deeper chart. And we're going to look right here, obviously, at the miracle move on Thursday that, that changed everything in, in some people's mind. Um, not mind. Uh, I'm still a believer in step-by-step, -step, one day at a time. But this chart certainly um, confirmed in my mind that that we were bouncing, and the question is, how high will we bounce? So certain levels were um, static pivots, certain are dynamic pivots. Mixed up a few of them in here, but these were all important to me, um, not only on Thursday, but on Friday as well. And the trajectory, uh, most traders would love to see it just pull back immediately, but that's not the case, I find. Typically, we need to, once we get this type of a move, you're going to get the momentum that will, will throw it up uh, some more. And then you have to churn a bit and go sideways, kind of like throwing a ball up into the air. And, and it reaches the apex, and then it will start its descent, and, and not until. So so all of these ideas, uh, I will be watching for um, on any subsequent pullback to see where the market gets supported or not. And each one that gets violated offers opportunity to go back and seek the next one. And uh, as we know, this had been a resistance level, and... Immediately upon breaking and that fast move, I mean, we had like a one minute bar that was, I don't know, 420 points. It was crazy. I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, okay, so 250s now prior uh, resistance is now support. That was the call. And then we scooted up into the close, kept squeezing. We had a, a push up overnight. We came back, obviously, to our uh, support line. The blue line is our slope line, our support line, basis this chart held beautifully on, on the test, came back in, could not break the double in here. We'll look at another chart to see that. That was at 40 area. Uh, and then end of day, it scoots out. Third time through trade comes in, takes out the high, and we all know the target that I had been calling for um, as possible, not <clears throat> must do, but that was the objective. And we got there by the end of the day. And then obviously profits taken uh, into the close. Let's take a look at another chart. <clears throat> and, and this is a two day chart, uh, RTH. And again, conforming to the principles um, and the pattern that, that I had talked about, where one level that breaks leads to the next and each subsequent rotation, and that's the key in this business, obviously, is trying to guess correctly on rotations. We had the gap down, came right into support. We held, bounced up. We came back in that 640 zone where I said, make sure you are paid if you are short. Lunch comes and then... And this comes out the top. And at that point, clearly, you need to recognize, if you understand the system the way I do, that this is our objective to get to 875. It's a, it's a uh, natural pivot in the system. Uh, and that played out beautifully. And then obviously came back in for uh, <clears throat> some profit taking and then make sure you are paid because this this was our uh, breakout. So make sure you're paid. Don't think about the plunge here. And then it scoots up into the close. Terrific looking chart, really. Now, for those of you who have ever studied some artwork, uh, Escher is one of my favorites, and, and he does some incredible optical illusions, and, and this one is no different, this stairway, and uh, it, it really, in my opinion, 
um, symbolizes the challenges that we have as traders. Are we going up? Or are we going down? Are we going in circles? And uh, I, I can't say enough for how, how we need to reconcile step by step each and every distinct um, swing of the market. Now, getting into the game involves understanding where potential charts in play uh, may help us. And this is an example of a Globex chart on Friday um, that I found helpful. I thought this was the correct uh, chart in play. And I based that because our rain line uh, was showing me that we really need to hold, uh, obviously, that um, uh, 562 and a half pivot that I had suggested should be in play was resistance becoming support to go to the next level. So, and and this was was my stop zone back here and at that uh, 540 area, thought that should hold if we broke backwards. Uh, it never did, never broke this. We get the bounce, we get the pullback. Here's that, that uh, double in here at the 40 area. And then it regains itself. And, and probably to a lot of traders surprise, we broke out again um, at low time and kept on um, bouncing. This is an idea that that I've come up with a long time ago. That there's there's a thing called morning after trend day, which I believe in. Uh, but after a huge move like this, sometimes we we need afternoon after trend day. We need time to allow these moving averages to catch up, and and that's exactly what happened on Friday with this chart. And and you can see it. So you know it's a. a Pivot like this is a static pivot. That's not going to change. This is not going to change. This is not going to change. And once you understand the concepts of dynamic and static pivots, it changes everything. Because you already know where the um, supports should try to hold. They may not. But that's every location that that holds tells you which one is next, which one is next. These are the stairs. These are the steps, the intervals. And once you get that, it changes everything. Uh, and it doesn't matter what product you are cha you are uh, chasing. Now here is an example of. Um, a sanitized chart that I have shown before. 640 support until broken. Bang. 250 resistance became support. Bang. And, and the objective has to be to knock out these highs. That's what the longs need to do if they're going to make progress. It, it's not good enough to just to be content and happy because that shows weakness here. You need the strength to say, uh, we have momentum and we're coming this way and we're coming for you. So that 875 target was achieved. And now the next question in my mind, obviously you can move supports up, but this is the deep support and you can move support up underneath this uh, low here, obviously. But the next objective for longs is try to get to 1204.5. And I know that because of the work that I've done and and doesn't mean it has to get there. Doesn't mean it has to stop there. It just means that's the next target that the longs are trying to get to, <clears throat> to establish uh, some credibility. If they can't do that, then in my mind, they they still need more time for another assault to do that. Now, I'm always perplexed by those people who say, no one knows. <clears throat> Nobody can possibly know where it's going next. And in truth, I understand that concept um, in the short term. But in the long term, I say hogwash. That argument does not hold weight. The law of large numbers says over time, all things being equal, then the edge goes to the person who has a system that can continuously and effectively understand how to reduce risk, how to get in the game, how to manage the risk once you are in the game, and that requires losing our ego, our bias, 
and understanding that maybe they, we have blind spots that we don't understand because we have not stumbled on ideas that will give us an edge. So whether your system is predicated on, on charts with pitchforks, Andrew's pitchfork, someone showed that the other day. Hey, if that works for you, fine. Um, someone else suggested about Fibonacci. Truthfully, I've got a spreadsheet that has all of the Fibos on it, but if I look at it once a month, that's a lot. I don't use that. There, I found a system that works much better than that and gives me an edge. So the real trick is, can I believe? This is not for you, it's for me. Can I believe in my system enough where when that fear comes at you and the, and the market is screaming at you, oh, no, it's going to fall and Chicken Little is, is running around with his head cut off. Can you take the trade, the fear trade, the one that goes against the contra, just like David Hunter? Everybody has been, um, not everybody, but some people have been criticizing him for his idea that we're going to bounce. Well, guess what? This week showed that he, he was right, that we were ready for a bounce. Will it come out the top and go to his targets? Who knows? It's not important. Not important. All we are looking to do is catch pieces of the moves every day as the market swings back and forth. And, and the dynamic pivots will tell us where the rungs on that ladder are in relation to the static pivots that we already know exist. And for those of you who are continually tripping, my belief is you're like someone climbing stairs and has uh, different interval sizes rather than a consistent set pattern. That's my message for the week. Hope it helps you. Have a wonderful weekend and thanks for listening.